Hello, my name is Mary Widener. I'm a sister of St. Benedict, and I'm here to share with you a few ideas about the Benedictine way of viewing work. In chapter 48 of the Rule of Benedict, we read, Idleness is the enemy of the soul. According to Norveen Vest, who has authored a book of reflections on the Rule of Benedict, if that is true, that idleness is the enemy of the soul, then work must be the friend of the soul. So let's take a few minutes here to reflect on our friend whose name is work. Having work, for most people anyway, is very important. At this time of experiencing the coronavirus pandemic, that has been very traumatic for people whose jobs no longer exist. And not only because their paychecks were affected, but also because they no longer have an experience of being productive and creative, or they have the awareness that they are contributing to society. People generally are grateful to have work, and if we have work that we believe in and that we love doing, we are truly blessed. I hope that is true for you. Two of the key elements or themes in the Rule of Benedict are balance and rhythm. Benedict saw the importance of living our lives with a balance of physical work, mental work, and spiritual work. And so he promoted arranging our day in a regular rhythm of reading and learning, of prayer, and of doing something productive in the form of physical labor. Benedict believed that if his followers engaged in creative work, they were taking responsibility for the uh, building up the community. Work, learning, and prayer were all considered important and all considered sacred. Now we might have an easier time of considering prayer as sacred, but how is work also sacred? The Lebanese poet Khalil Gibran has said, work is love made visible. I believe he saw work that way because work tends to draw us out of ourselves. Work points us to the care of others, to the common good, to love. There's nothing we do that does not affect the world in which we live. Everything we do has some effect on someone somewhere. When we view our work as love made visible, it is a way of seeing work as a calling as a vocation. In her book, An Altar in the World, Barbara Brown Taylor writes about a time when she was trying to figure out what it was that God wanted her to do. And then one night she said when her heart was really open to hearing the voice of God, she cried out, God, what do you want me to do with my life? And the answer she heard was, do anything that pleases you and belong to me. And she came to realize that it was not so important what she did, but how she did it that mattered. God had given her an overall purpose, but was not going to supply the details for her. Another vocation story that I love is uh, when there was a TV interview with Gregory Peck the wonderful actor in To Kill a Mockingbird and many other wonderful movies. And after the interview, they had questions by the audience and a clergyman stood up and said, Mr. Peck, you have often played the role of a priest in your movies. Did you ever contemplate becoming one? And Gregory Peck said, I grew up in a strict Catholic family, attended mass regularly, and at the age of seven or eight, I felt a call to be a priest. But I quickly recovered from that. And I found my vocation as an actor. There was laughter in the audience, but the, the clergyman who asked the question said, pardon me, Mr. Peck, but I believe that God has blessed us more through your vocation as an actor. So our vocation then is not so much what we do, but how we do it and who we are when we do it. A vocation really is God's daily call to us to be who we are, to allow our lives to unfold according to our intrinsic nature, 
and to become who God already knows us to be. It is coming to know that my work is God's work. Sister Joan Chittister says it is unfinished by God because God meant it to be finished by me. In our work, we express our own unique abilities as we serve as God's partners in bringing creation to its intended fulfillment. Work is our effort to continue what God wants done. Benedict clearly recognized the importance of the individual and the gradual unfolding of an individual soul. He saw a clear relationship between our being and our doing. We discover who we are. We become who we are through what we do. But we also do what we do because of who we are. So while work is a friend of our soul, Benedict stresses his stress on balance helps us to remember that we are more than our work and that it is we who bring dignity to our work, not necessarily the other way around. Jesus viewed work as very meaningful and honorable part of life. His work uh, was as a carpenter, a teacher, a healer, was important. And many of his parables are about work or workers, or stewards. A steward was a trustee, someone entrusted to the care of something that belongs to someone else. A steward was expected to watch over, to protect, and to bring to fruition the things in his or her possession. In our work, according to Benedict, we are called to be good stewards by the way we care for that work which has been entrusted to us. Benedict, Benedict describes this kind of care by saying, we must treat everything as though it were a vessel of the altar. It is not only taking care of the tools of our work, but also the people we work beside and those who benefit from our work. It is also about caring for our own bodies, minds, and spirits. How would this world change? How would your work change if you treated everything and everyone, including yourself, as a vessel of the altar? Viewing our work as Christian stewardship may require a radical shift in how we understand our work. We need to be competent, of course, yet realize that we're not totally in control. Sometimes we can't change our circumstances, but we can control the power we give to our circumstances. Do we allow our workplace to destroy our peace, our confidence, our self-esteem, our awareness of God, our living out of our vocation? Or do we allow God to use us as an instrument of change in our work when change is needed? Noreen Best wrote about three things that are common in the workplace that might challenge our attempts to be effective stewards. And they are production, technology, and competition. Production is good, of course, but it can equate who we are with what we produce. We might feel pressured at times to produce as much as possible in the least amount of time. But Thomas Merton once said, the rush and pressure of modern life are a form of violence to ourselves. If we become so concerned about how much we produce that we live life at a frantic pace, we may be doing violence to ourselves. Technology. Technology offers wonderful opportunities and possibilities especially in the last six months dealing with this pandemic. But technology can also isolate us. Often technology gives us information without wisdom. There is the challenge of becoming more comfortable communicating with a screen than we are with communicating with another human being. Competition, in theory, it is good 
and it, it encourages innovative ideas for the most helpful practices and products. But in practice, it can create a hostile environment in the workplace, allowing a few people to become winners and others to be losers. Emphasis on individual success can pit employee against employee. How might we deal with these three common workplace challenges, production, technology, and competition? It might help us to look at St. Benedict's idea of obedience. Obedience is not a popular concept. We often see it in limiting our personal freedom, and we live in a culture that greatly values individual freedom. But for Benedict, obedience was about listening. Listening with the ear of our hearts. Listening not only to those in authority, but also to those we live and work with, even the youngest members, listening to the Holy Spirit, the Gospel, and to that voice within us. Listening with our hearts opens us to the insights of others, as well as to the voice within ourselves. Listening can open us to something new. It enables us to change our hearts, to explore new paths, to discover new needs. That's obedience. Benedictine spirituality sees obedience lived out in the context of community. It does not mean the individual is diminished, but it, it is about recognizing the care, the support, the wisdom of others in our community. We all exist in a number of communities, family, social, neighborhood, church communities and our work community. And of course, sometimes the relationships in our work community can be problematic. But every task we do is embedded in a web of relationships. And if we can celebrate that fact rather than fight against it, we may discover God's presence in the community of our workplace. Some moments in our work might seem very far from God, I can only imagine the stressful situations you might experience daily in a college setting, whether it be an irate student, a demanding supervisor, a seemingly lazy co-worker, the demands on your time. But can God speak through all of this? Benedict encourages us to find God everywhere in all those people and circumstances that are given to us each day. Obedience is not the easy work of just doing what somebody else tells us to do. Instead, it is the act of choice to use my freedom to listen deeply to the surroundings around me and to learn and grow in my appreciation of others and in my own self-discovery and to find God there. Essentially, obedience is mindfulness, being mindful of the presence of God in all the situations, all the calls, the requirements, the joys, the challenges that surround us in our daily work, and hearing and responding to the empowering voice of God in all those things. Brother David Steindlerast, an Austrian Benedictine monk, would say that obedience is about giving yourself in service to a situation. He says that our English language sometimes gives us away because we often speak of taking things. We take a walk, we take a nap, we take a vacation, we take time. Instead, he recommends that we give ourselves to those things and then allow them to take us and take us back to where they came from, which is God. St. Benedict would agree with Brother David, as Benedict found it, it important for us to give ourselves to our daily experience of work, to listen with our hearts, and then to obey whatever it is that makes our heart more human and our life and the lives of those around us more meaningful. Your job 
might be planning a program, teaching a class, keeping the environment beautiful, filing records, offering secretarial assistance, any of these things might be your job. But your vocation is what shapes how you do these things and who you are in doing these things so that your work can help you become who God already knows you to be. I close with a Hasidic tale. Once upon a time, the ancients tell us, a disciple said to the rabbi, God took six days to create the world and it is not perfect. How is that possible? Could you have done better? The rabbi asked. Yes, I think I could have, the disciple said. Then what are you waiting for? The rabbi asked. Go ahead, start working. May your work make our world a more perfect place and may it truly become a friend of your soul. Thank you.